Okay, so in the last video I reviewed the Cartier Solo Tank XL, the automatic model, and I spoke about this watch as being a great value, very recognizable watch from a prestige brand. Uh, Cartier has huge history in watch design and making and jewelry, and it remains a very, very cool watch and jewelry brand. For the past few years, Cartier has been in the top five for watch sales in the Swiss watch market, and it has a lot of recognizable products. This is the entry-level Cartier Steel Automatic watch, retailing at just under 4,000 euros, and it's a cool watch. I mean, it's really got a lot of things going for it. It's a watch that for reasonable money when you compare to a lot of other brands, it has a very recognizable look. It isn't often copied and it has a very, very classic timeless look, as well as some good wrist presence. But it also has a number of competitors. And I'm going to show you one, which is a great value rival. And this is a watch that has a little bit of history and a little bit of controversy. And it is the De Grisagono Numero Uno Instrumento Series. And this is a great rival and competitor to the Cartier Tank. And the reason why is it has a very similar size, but this is available for almost a quarter to half the price new of the Cartier. Now, this watch was designed in 2000 and sold through De Grisogono jewelry stores. Now, for pricing at the time, in 2000, a quartz version of this watch was £4,000. Now, that was more than an equivalent Rolex at the time, or an equivalent Rolex date, just saying. And this watch, if I'm honest, absolutely floors the Cartier in terms of competition. And I will show you why. Let's look, first of all, at the crown here is a synthetic cabochon, very identifiable as Cartier and is on many of their watches, but this is a lab-grown or lab-produced synthetic cabochon. On the Degree Sagono, part of its coolness and one of the things it did for jewellery and watchmaking was make the black diamond a cool thing. Now, for years, these had always been pushed aside and they managed to make them a cool and desirable item. So instead of anything synthetic, you actually have a black diamond cabochon on the crown, which is very hard wearing. And with this model being a PVD coated model, it gives it a really nice look. Now, let's look at the other reasons where this wins. On the Cartier, you have a solid case back, which is pretty standard. And then, on the Degree Sagono, and I apologize for the terrible focus there, you've got this. It's a Swiss ETA movement which has been blackened. And I just think it is such a cool feature. As far as I know, this was the first PVD coated movement. And it also has an engraved rotor. This is water resistant, I think to 100 meters. And it is just a really nice feature. So already it wins on two parts. The construction, the case markings, and the bracelet markings are incredibly nice quality. Also, this is a PBD coated watch, so you will get wear on this. However, this is available as a polished steel version as well. But the PVD actually is a really nice look. And on the wrist, when we put it on for presence, this watch really has a lot going for it. It's very easy to wear. And it's very chunky. It's a super cool watch. Now, the other thing that this has, like the Cartier, is a date function at 7 o'clock. What you notice here, when you look at it closely, is that there is an extra layer of sapphire crystal covering the date. So you actually have two layers and that is just a sign of the quality that you have. The inner chapter ring here is loomed, as are the hands. So at night, you can still read the time. And it's a really, really well put together watch. It's a watch that doesn't really have any copies or any rivals in terms of the design. But the design is really good. And I will show you why. If we take it off, 
you will see that rather than the traditional lugs, you have this additional lug here, which is a nice feature and gives the watch slightly bigger presence on the wrist. It's quite a high profile case. And you also have the chance to exchange for straps here. Now this is, I think, 19 millimeters. It's quite small, so if you do change your straps, it is going to be affecting the overall look of the watch. Now, another thing, and I'm gonna put this box away. If you look at the size of the profile, you can see that this is almost double the thickness of the Cartier. Another thing that this has, which is a good thing, is the Cartier lies very flat on the wrist, whereas this one has a nice contour, which sits very well on the wrist, and especially with these extra lug additions here, it will fit and wrap much more closely to your wrist. Now, if you are buying these secondhand, which is the only way you can buy them now, because as of, I think, 2018, the company filed for bankruptcy in less than pleasant circumstances. However, these watches are incredibly well made. It is an all Swiss made watch. It's beautifully constructed from really great materials. And if you look, this is a similar type of bracelet to the Cartier with this H link. However, this one has a rounded center link and profiled links here. And it fits really nicely on the wrist. Now, if you're going to buy one of these secondhand, which is the only way to buy them, you will need to check about the strap. Any official strap from de Grisogono is very expensive to buy even secondhand. And you will also find that because of this deploying clasp here, you have to buy a size that will fit your wrist. They are not adjustable and they cannot be cut. So be careful when doing that. The other alternative is to simply buy a new strap and clasp, which is an option. With the PVD model, you could obviously make it very sporty with the addition of a nylon strap or a sailcloth strap. But this is a very cool watch. And for the money, these range between 1,000 to 2,000 pounds. And in some cases, they are selling for 4,000. It depends on condition, box and papers. However, this is a brand that no longer is in existence. So whereas the Cartier is easy to service and easy to get replacement parts, it will be difficult on this watch. In terms of quality and weight, the De Grisogono absolutely trounces the Cartier. It's a beautiful watch. It looks sporty, it looks elegant, and it's very, very comfortable to wear. When it comes to wrist presence and when it comes to overall look and wow factor, the Cartier wins in terms of its recognizability, but the De Grisogono absolutely wins in terms of wearability and versatility. This is a watch that you can just wear every day and just enjoy looking at. The PVD coating on this, whilst it does wear like on all watches, is beautiful. It's not a shiny PVD. It kind of has a very satin finish, like a gunmetal finish, and it's really, really beautifully made. I mean, everything about this watch is absolutely stunning. The construction is excellent. It's a really, really high quality watch, and that was reflected by the super high retail price in its day. I would guess that when these were made, they were around about £7,000. Um, they represent amazing value now on the second-hand market, and it's a watch that not everybody is going to have. So, if you want to spend €4,000 on the Cartier, or €1,000 upwards on the De Grisogono, you have a choice of two super cool, super smart dressy watches, which both offer a lot of wrist presence, but when it comes to quality, when it comes to fit, when it comes to finish, this one is the winner. Thank you, guys.